In this short series of videos that I'll be uploading to my channel, I'll be explaining how to create the famous Space Invaders game using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. If you want to check out the code that I'll be writing throughout these videos, I'll be leaving a link to it down in the description right below the like button. Now, in addition, I want to give a big shout out to this YouTuber on screen right here, whose code helped me a lot in creating this video series. Now, if you enjoy these videos, then let me know by giving me a like on this video and I'll make sure to make more of these videos in the future. So let's jump right into the editor. In the first step, we will um, create the window in which we will play the game. Now, within this window, we will add the background and our spaceship, but for the moment, we're going to leave the movement of the spaceship aside just to not overcomplicate things right from the beginning. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the folder containing all the images that we're going to use into VS Code. Now, I'll be leaving a link to the images, um, including all the credits to the images in the description as well, so that you can go ahead and check them out and use them if you want to follow along step by step. So after dragging in the images, I'll make an index.html file for our HTML code, a style.css file for our styling, and a main.js file that will contain the mechanics of the game in JavaScript. Next, in the index.html file, I'm going to press the um, exclamation mark and enter sign because in VS Code, this creates a standard HTML skeleton that you can see right here. Now, within the title tags, um, we will add the document title, Space Invaders. And a bit further below in the body tags, I'm going to add an outer wrapper for the header, the game, and the footer, as well as an inner wrapper that only contains the game. This will help us adjust the layout of the game window in the browser. So let's go ahead and implement this real quick. The header will have the name of the game, so Space Invaders, uh, within the tags. Then comes the inner wrapper called Game Wrapper, containing the game. And below that, I am going to add the script tags. Now, the script tags are going to point towards the main.js file, which contains the mechanics of our game in JavaScript. Finally, I'm going to add an empty footer, which we may or may not use later on. So if we go ahead and run this um, at this stage in our browser, then we will see that there is a pretty much blank window and all it says in the very top left-hand side is Space Invaders. And that's it. So now that we have an empty window uh, with a title, we are going to take care of the styling of this uh, window. So moving back to the editor, we're going to open the CSS file and we're going to add the styling for the body, the wrappers, the header, and the footer. When it comes to the styling, the most important thing that we have over here is that we justify the content in the center and align all the items in the center. So irrespective of the browser window size, uh, the game will always be centered in the middle. And finally, we're just going to add some very simple styling for the header and the footer. So although we have already added some styling to our CSS file, you'll notice that if we run the game in the browser at this stage, nothing will have changed. Now the reason why nothing changes is because uh, we still need to link the index.html file to our style sheet. And we link them together by writing this one line of code right here. Now if we go ahead and run all this again and try and execute the index.html file in our browser, you'll notice that the styling is actually applied to the HTML document. The next simple step we're going to take is to add the moving background to our game. We can implement this in the CSS file straight away. The background is simply a moving image that loops infinitely. So now if we have um, all this uh, implemented, we can now go ahead and execute this in our browser window, and you'll see that we have a beautiful background that loops forever. 
Now after all of this, it's time to get the spaceship onto our screen and build the game. Let's jump into the main.js file and start coding the game. First, we'll define a few constants. In JavaScript, all keyboard keys can be referenced by a unique number. Since we'll use the um, right and left arrow keys to move the spaceship, we'll need to use the corresponding numbers um, or the corresponding number keys to be more precise, which are 39 and 37 respectively. And these are going to be our first two constants. Then we can also go ahead and declare the height and the width of the game window. Next, we'll create a constant called state. And the state constant stores all the key parameters of the game. Um, for now, we'll leave it at the X position and the Y position of our spaceship, as well as the width of the spaceship image. Moving on, we're going to take care of initializing the game. In this code block, we'll first select the container in which we want to create the game. If you remember the index.html file we looked at earlier, you'll remember that we want to create the game within the .main div. So we'll set the container equal to that node, or specifically the node called main. Then we'll pass this container into the function create player that we will create in just a few seconds. The create player function sets the initial X and Y position of the spaceship on our screen. In addition, it also sets the size of the spaceship image. Below the comment general functions, we will now create the set position and the set size functions. The set position function takes as arguments the DOM element, which is the image of the spaceship, as well as the X and Y coordinates of the spaceship. And what it does is simply place the image at the specified coordinates. Now, the set size function, on the other hand, takes as an argument the DOM element and a width. And its purpose is to scale the image to the uh, size that we want so that it appears nice and smugly within our window. All right, so if we go ahead and execute the index.html file in our browser again, you'll see that a small spaceship uh, appears at the bottom of the game canvas. Perhaps the most important step in this video is to get the spaceship moving across our screen. In order to do so, we need our code to read key presses that we input. So let's add a function called keypress that sets the state variable move right to true if the right key is pressed on the keyboard and the state variable move left to true if the um, left key is pressed. And since we've introduced two new state variables, move right and move left, we can't forget to add them to the constant called state that we created earlier. All right, so now we have the function for the keypress but we need to make sure that once the keys are released, the states are reset. More specifically, if we let go of the right key, for example, then the move right state variable is set back to false. And this is implemented by the key release function that we have right here. One additional thing that I want to add to the key press function is a console log of which key is being pressed. Now, the reason why I want to do this is quite simply to show you how the console works in the browser later on. Then we still need to remember to add the event listeners to our code to make sure that the code actually checks for these key presses. At the very end of our JavaScript file, we're going to call an update function, which is going to run the game. So I've done this in the reverse order over here. We're creating a call, so we still need to create the actual function behind the call. So the underlying function will update the player, uh, which means that it will allow us to move the spaceship left and right. And in addition to that, it will also repaint the canvas every single frame. Finally, let's go on and create the update player function. If the state variable move left is true, then the x value of our spaceship decreases. And if the state variable move right is true, then the x variable of the spaceship increases. 
After implementing this functionality, we can go on and call the setPosition function to make sure that the uh, spaceship is set into the position that it's meant to be in. Now we can go ahead and execute all this in the browser and you'll see that we have a spaceship that can move left and right. Now if we right click within our browser window and click inspect, you can see that we can open the console. And remember earlier we talked about creating a console log of which key is being pressed? That is exactly what you can see right here. Whenever I press the left and right keys, they are logged in the console of our browser. Alright, so that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one.